Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're at. West Coast, East Coast, Midwest, South. Just wanted to visit with everybody and share some insight. Not that I know everything, so I don't know hardly anything. <laughs> just, uh, just want to share my experiences. Um, the Highway Pit Master here. Hope everybody's being safe, everybody's doing well, and I hope everybody's making some money out here on these roads, these highways, especially being safe. Just wanted to update everybody. Um, I'm out and I'm rolling, which is exciting. Finally generating some, some revenue. But I uh, wanted to uh, follow up or continue our discussion with the Landstar orientation, day two. We talked about day one and how that all, that day took place, uh, mainly focusing on safety and such as um, hazmat, securement, CSA scores, uh, things of that nature, things that we need to focus on how those things affect us individually as operators and as the company as a whole, how uh, what we do on the highway affects everybody. The better the CSA score, the better our, uh, our outlook or our DOT is as a whole, uh, the more paths we get at the scale using the pre-pads, right? I mean, that's less chances to get pulled into the scale house and, you know, whatever. Taking a closer look or whatever. Uh, so all of those things play a part. But I wanted to talk about day two at the orientation of Landstar. Again, I was in Rockford, Illinois for two days. Um, class was administered by a young lady by the name of Kathy Bell. Incredible, incredible young lady. Did an amazing job. Truly enjoyed it. Um, but day two was the fun day, if, if you would. We talked about the business. Um, how to do a proper search on the load board. Uh, how to use the various apps. Landstar has some great tools that make our day-to-day out here, such as the uh, Landstar One, uh, I guess the app or the online portal, uh, being able to find fuel, being able to see the discounts. We also discussed IFTA, and understanding IFTA. We never really dove into IFTA. This is uh, a great way to get an understanding of how IFTA works. So we dove into that. Got a got a better, clearer understanding in it, you know, how to possibly break even, at least. Um, how to use that app, how to find the fuel, how to see a discount, how to see the state discount, or the date, the state um, if the discount or um, reimbursement. Uh, understanding, you know, why would you buy fuel in Pennsylvania when it costs more? as opposed to buying it in Indiana, where the pump says it's less, but obviously the, the IFTA tax is less or more, or however you want to explain it. That's something I would definitely um, dive into if you don't understand IFTA. Um, I believe the two guys, I think Blue Ribbon Trucking, they discuss and give a really good in-depth understanding of it in a pretty clear video if you haven't seen that. Um, but we talked about the load board, and that was fun. Uh, seeing where the money is, getting on the air, and you know, being able to create a search and filter, being able to get alerts. That was pretty neat. I, I enjoyed that. That's what I've been waiting for. Uh, so that that's what day two was. Primarily, really... Uh, learning how to maximize your business, uh, your company, setting up uh, also on that day, we also got our, uh, was able to set up 
or activate our fuel cards. Uh, one of them being a sediment card, the other one being a fuel card, or however way you want to do that. That was the day we did that. So day two was funner. Uh, they all went fast. And from that point, it was, um, you, were, you were kicked out the nest. And the real work got, got started. So I'm going to continue on with this video because the next few days are important. One of the things that, um, that a lot of folks know or you may not know is when you come out of orientation, the most, the first thing you need to do is get on what we call trailer utilization, get on the waiting list. And that waiting list could be 24 to 48 hours. Uh, I've heard it being longer. I've heard it taking a week to get a trailer. So that is one of the things you need to prepare for. I wasn't willing to wait that long. So I did a lot of things to try to get a trailer or to get moving. So um, that Wednesday morning, I checked out of the hotel and I headed back, back home and immediately started uh, hitting the phones, checking the board for what they call SOS loads. Um, those are loads that uh, in the event, you know, someone truck goes down or whatever the case may be. And there's loads that still need to get repowered. Uh, if there's one close or you're willing to deadhead to it or you know, whatever the case may be, uh, that's an option for you uh, to help yourself get, get moving. Um, there are also power only loads. Now those are tricky because in most cases you need to bring a trailer in to drop and hook in a sense get that loaded trailer or whatever it is and take it to its destination. Uh, that's another option. Uh, I got back home on Wednesday. I was uh, back home around maybe 1 o'clock that afternoon. Uh, my next my next move was to figure out a way to get moving. So I was home Wednesday. Thursday morning I got up and I started hitting the pavement again. I called trailer utilization to see how far we were away from the trailer. Uh, they said that date was a target date, but they couldn't promise anything. So I, I understood. I just wanted to, you know, touch base to, to see where we're at in that process. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Larry Cothran, and I've been watching his videos and trying to get ideas of, you know, whatever it is, how to make money at Landstar, whatever. He's got a, a, a bevy of topics, some good information how to be a successful BCO or owner operator here in Lansdowne. So he always talked about an agency um, with the abbreviation GAD, um, Crossing Logistics, and based out of Alabama, Gatson, Alabama to be exact. And I said, hey, you know, why not? Let's give him a call. And I did. I gave him a call and spoke to a young lady there. And I would say probably around 1 o'clock I reached them. She called me back and said, hey, uh, I got a load or a trailer that needs to be moved coming out of Chicago going to Memphis. How soon could you be there? You do have a fresh clock. I had a fresh clock. And I said, I could be there in two hours. Said it's yours. And I ain't going to tell you how much it paid, but it was very good. Um, they paid me to take it, the trailer, an empty trailer, down to Memphis, to the airport, dropped it off at a FedEx depot, and returned back technically, technically, to O'Hare for the same rate that I went down coming back. But I was given permission to just dead head back. Are you kidding me? I got paid to take an empty trailer down from Chicago to Memphis, and then got paid to dead head back to Chicago. I, I just, I don't have the words. I was blown away. 
immediately was able to uh, generate some income and generate some decent income in a matter of from Thursday to Friday night. I mean, that was that was unbelievable. Then I was able to get a load coming out of Indianapolis going to Milwaukee. Quick four-hour, three-and-a-half-hour run. Generated some great income. Great revenue. Blown away by this because, you know, I was sitting there twiddling my thumbs. Friday morning, I did get a call from Trailer Utilization where I was finally given a trailer. So, the trailer was at all places, Rockford, <laughs> where I was at the uh, first couple of days for orientation. I have a really good feeling that I looked at that trailer for, for three days while I was sitting up there in Rockford. But hey, it is what it is. I was, um, so in that, in that process, I headed back to Rockford uh, since I was, I dropped the load or trailer, empty trailer in Memphis, I was already getting paid to come up to Chicago anyhow, you know, I live in that area. So I um, I headed to Rockford, went and got my trailer, and then shot over to Indianapolis. And I know that was a lot of driving, but again, I was paid to come back to Chicago dead heading with no trailer. So, you know, it wasn't for nothing. I got paid for that. But I used that opportunity to get my trailer, one. Took that trailer to Indianapolis, dropped that trailer at the airport in Indianapolis, picked up a loaded trailer, took that to Milwaukee, dropped that loaded trailer, and picked up another empty. And uh, guess what, y'all? We're, we're, we're in motion. So I'm actually headed back. It's a Sunday. I'm headed back to, uh, to home right now, which was like an hour, hour and a half. I'm headed home, and I booked the load for tomorrow going to Georgia with the eight mile deadhead from my house. So, I mean, I can say that things are starting off pretty good here at Landstar. Obviously, things happen, ups and downs, but I'm starting on a high note. So I'm excited about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, come out of orientation on Tuesday, check out a hotel on Wednesday. Thursday, I'm under a load. So, where there's a will, there's a way. Don't give up. Just get on the phone. Talk to some agents. There's a good chance they'll find something for you if you're still waiting for a trailer. So I say all that to say, keep trucking. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, I'll continue you know, giving content. You know, it's 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 fun for me. It's a good opportunity to share. And you know, I just love to, to, to be a part of this industry, industry of truck driving. So, hey, you guys stay safe. And uh, maybe one day to meet some of you guys out there in the, in the truck stops. Hey, let's keep trucking. Let's stay safe. All right, guys? Talk to you later.